power and energy. I have to leap forward a bit here because we didn't do electrical or solar energy because we need power first and you'll see why. We have energy versus power. Okay. Energy is the ability to do work and its simplest form is W equals F times D. We get units of Newton meter and we call that joules. So let's say my car dissipated 1 million joules of kinetic energy in braking. When it gets to power, it's the rate at which energy is being used. So it's whatever is on the left here. Remember, W and E are interchangeable terms. We take our energy, divide by time. That is in joules per second. And what causes confusion is that joules per second has been given the definition watt. My car dissipated 1 million joules in 15 seconds, which when we calculate power as energy over time, we get one megajoule in 10 seconds. That works out to 100,000 joules per second, which we call 100,000 watts. Why is this important? Well, very often in our society, we are concerning with not only the energy load, but how fast we can get the job done. So let's look at an elevator that's 100 meters in height. The elevators are identical, 2,000 kilograms. So the total energy they need to reach the top of the elevator shaft is the same in both cases. Gravitational potential energy comes out to about 2 million joules each. But if the one elevator takes 10 seconds and the other one 45, their power requirements are very different. This elevator needs to expend 2 megajoules of energy in 10 seconds. That gives us 200,000 kilowatts. Meanwhile, this one, taking 45 seconds, we get a value of 44 kilowatts. And this would be at first glance. It's not always the case we would need 200 kilowatt motor to do the job on the left and a 44 kilowatt motor to do the job on the right. And obviously buildings that are not real palatial tall palaces get the motor on the right. This is why you often see short buildings have terribly slow elevators and tall expensive buildings have faster ones. The smaller the building, they'll often go to with a much lower power of motor to get you there but we'll see how they dodge this and they don't need motors nearly as big later on. Now, these are all the expressions of energy we've looked at so far. The most general, when we see acceleration, lifting, dragging something across the floor, stretching a spring, or the energy contained in a moving object. All of these W's and this E can be put here and you can calculate the power in that situation. This is a quantity, 10,000 liters. If it takes 200 seconds to drain, that is 50 liters per second. That's our power. When do we get told the power? When do we get told the quantity? Well, the quantity we can calculate when, with like say E equals half mv squared when we're at highway speed. But the fact is the water to your home, the natural gas, everything else just rains down in a continuous fashion. So we actually wind up needing to talk about the power we have in our electrical wires and the power of the sun more than we talk about the actual energy. And it's true of you as well. Two different people, 20 year old athlete and a 90 year old person might both be able to lift 50 bricks onto a pickup truck doing the same work on those bricks, but only one of them could probably do it in 20 seconds. So an athlete, two athletes may do the same amount of work running on a track, but the one that did it faster had higher power. They were able to output their energy quicker. So a fire hose is more powerful than a garden hose because the fire hose can produce water faster 
than the garden hose can. So we can look at totals starting from the flow rate. So if I said to you there's a water tank that's leaking 50 liters a second for 100 seconds, how much was in this tank? Well, 50 liters a second for 100 seconds, that's 5,000 liters. What if your boss said, hey, I'm paying you $200 a day. There's your total. But instead, if your boss says, I'll pay you $20 an hour for 10 hours, he's still giving you the total. He's just done it by giving you the separate math pieces and allowing you to multiply them in your head. I could tell you to get me 5,000 liters of water, or I could say, turn on that tap at 50 liters a second for 100 seconds, please. It's an odd way of expressing a total, but it works. So here's an example. If we want to know the total energy that came out of a system, and we've been reported with the power, then it makes sense if power is energy over time, then a rearrangement is energy equals power times time. So the total amount of orange juice, of energy, of water, of money, anything that you want to accumulate when you know the flow rate. So power, how many joules a second? So this case here, 60 joules per second. If it ran for 10 seconds, you could give me the total energy burn. So let's look at a 100 watt light bulb. A 100 light bulb turned on for 10 seconds will consume 100 joules a second times 10 seconds, 1,000 joules of energy. A watt is a joule per second. What's the difference between amps and watts? We won't deal much with amps in the grade 12 course. It was something in grade nine. Amps are counting cups of electrons per second. Power is calculating the total energy those electrons have per second. And the difference between these two is this is counting electrons per second. This is counting joules per second. What is the energy equivalent of an electron? It's its voltage. So if we know the voltage, we can turn a current flow in a circuit to power. Here's how it works. If you look at this sheet here, on this one right here, it tells us 120 volts and 10 amps. But the one below says 900 watts. This inspection plate is telling us 900 joules a second. This one is telling us 10 bundles of electrons are coming through per second, and this is the energy in each bundle. So without going into the mathematical proof, it turns out all you have to do is multiply voltage times current, and you'll get the power. So while this inspection plate stated the power, 900 joules per second, this one is giving you the flow rate and the energy rate separately, and then you just multiply the two together and you get that it's a 600 watt device. The conventions are not consistent. So there's a pile of different conventions for doing these things, what's stated on that inspection plate. But keep it simple and just multiply voltage times current when you need to turn electrical quantities like that into power.